Hey everyone, this is Zach, the broker of Zach Taylor Real Estate. Today, I want to cover how to estimate a seller's net proceeds based on any purchase price that they give you. This is meant more for real estate agents, but also can be used by homeowners to kind of estimate if it's the right time to sell or not. I think this is one of those basic skills that all real estate agents should have. I get a lot of these training video topic ideas from our agents. So if I've noticed, hey, one or two people have asked this, let me go ahead and make a training video that way, because I know there's probably more out there that have this question and I want all of you guys to succeed, take your business to the next level. So I think this skill will help with that. And so there's three reasons why I want you to watch this full video real quick. So number one is what I covered already. And that's to inform our seller. So our seller, a lot of times they're going to wonder, hey, if I sell my house for $500,000, do you know what I would roughly make off the sale? And it helps them better decide, hey, is now the right time to sell or not? And also it helps make us look better because if they decide, hey, it is the right time, we've helped them out, we've showed them what they could make, it helps with their future plans. And then two, another reason that's important to know this skill is for sale by owners. So that's what FISBOs are. But a lot of times for sale by owners, they're trying to list their home on their own, they're trying to save money, but eventually they might come to a point where they say, you know what, I will work with you if I can net at least X. X could be, I want to make at least $50,000 and I'll list my home with you. I want to make at least $100,000 and I'll work with you. So we have to be able to figure out, okay, based on what they want to make, what do we have to sell the house for in order to make it a win-win situation? And the last skill that I want to show you is Secure more listings. And I apologize about my handwriting, very messy, but hopefully you guys can read this. But I want you to secure more listings as a real estate agent. So knowing this skill, at the very end, I'm going to teach you what I did with a lot of my listings in order to get more listings, but also oftentimes get a higher commission. So let me go into how to break down what a seller should roughly net when they sell their house. So let's go ahead and erase this. So let's say, for example, a seller calls me and they say, hey, Zach, I'm thinking about selling my house and I'm thinking about listing it and selling it for $500,000. Can you tell me what I would make? So let's go ahead and write that down. If the house sold for $500,000. Now we're going to have to know, obviously, there's going to be costs and they're not going to net exactly $500,000. So what costs have to go into this calculation to determine what they would actually net? So the first thing I like to do when calculating this is obviously commissions. Now, we all know these are fully negotiable. There's no standard rate, but I want to calculate in this estimate what I want to negotiate with the seller. So this could be 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%. It could be a flat fee. It could be whatever, but it's what I want to negotiate with the seller. I'm going to go ahead and build that into what they're going to net. So let's say, for example, the seller, I want to charge them a 5% total commission, and that includes my fee plus what I'm going to be giving to a buyer's agent. So it's 5% total. So let's say to do that, you would times this by 0.95 because I'm 5%. That's the total commission. So let's write that down to commission. So I would get 475. That's my next line item. But there's a bigger expense usually than commissions, and that's their mortgage. A lot of sellers have a mortgage. So we're going to want to ask them, hey, what do you owe on your mortgage? And if they don't know, you might be able to look at uh, property tax records, property assessor's office. Sometimes they have recorded what the mortgage amount was. And then you can estimate based on there or have the seller kind of call into their mortgage company and find out. So let's say in this example, they owe 200,000. So now I'm down to 275 for the seller. But there's one more expense and that's gonna be closing costs. So a lot of times we're going to be working with a title company and they're going to have their own set of costs. Some are going to be theirs. Some are going to be just the state county taxes where we live. So just like I said, there could be prorated taxes. There could be city taxes, county taxes. There could be the title company settlement fee, recording fee, search fee. There could be title insurance. So you'll want to make a relationship with a title company and just ask them, hey, if I have a house for $500,000, in this neighborhood in Nashville, if it sells for that price, roughly what would be your closing cost when you have the deal? And they should give you a ballpark. 
So let's just say to keep it easy, let's just say it's four thousand dollars. And this is mortgage, and this is closing, closing costs. So now we're down to two seventy one, roughly. And this is an estimate. Again, this is not an exact. So we want to reiterate that with our seller. Hey, this is just an estimate. A lot of times, title companies they're able to write up an official like PDF document, it's called a seller net sheet, and they can break down and give them an estimate and it'll have a disclaimer on there. Hey, this is just an estimate. This is not official. Figures can change. So I would also probably have the seller sign off on that, stating that it's an estimate or create something that says, hey, this is truly just an estimate. You should verify these figures on your own. But we get around $271,000. So if they sell it for $500,000, 5% commission, $200,000 mortgage, it's paid off when, it, when it's closed, $4,000 in closing costs, they're going to make roughly $271,000. Now, knowing this number for the seller, this helps them better plan for the future, see if they can accomplish their next goals, use that money to pay off debt, whatever their goal is with selling this house. Now they have a better idea of, hey, what can we actually do with the money that we have? And now let's work backwards with the for sale by owner situation. Let me just erase this. So back to that example, let's say the seller of a, a for sale by owner said, hey, Zach, I'll work with you, but only if I can net $50,000. So now we have to determine, can we create a win-win situation with the seller? So let's work backwards now. They want to net $50,000. Again, we're going to ask the same question. Do you owe a mortgage on the property? If so, what's that amount left? Let's say it's the same 200,000. So now we're up to 250. Mortgage, they want to net that number. So now we're here. Ne next is going to be our closing costs. So again, we called our title company, they gave us an estimate, we have an estimate sheet. So let's say again, it's another $4,000 in closing costs. Oh, my pen. There we go. Now we're at 254. And then last is commissions. So we're going to do this backwards. Let me grab my calculator. So 254. Let's say again, I want to negotiate a 5% commission with this seller. So I'm going to divide this, not times, because we're going backwards and we're going to divide by point. Nine five, and then I get two sixty seven, three hundred sixty eight dollars and some change. Let me label this commission. So this is what I have to get a purchase and sale agreement for two hundred sixty seven thousand dollars in order for them to net fifty thousand dollars. Another important topic I didn't cover the last one, but let me go ahead and cover it. Is when you call your title company. If they say, hey, it's going to be roughly $3,561, I always want to round up. All my expenses, I want to round up, round up. The reason I want to do that is I would rather overestimate all the expenses. The seller then gets to closing, and then the number that they're going to make is actually higher than what I estimated. That makes everybody happy. That makes the seller happy. There's no surprises versus me being really aggressive with these numbers, really exact something random pop up and then it's below what I've estimated and now they're unhappy. So a better way to create raving fans with your sellers, overestimate and then over deliver as well. So let's say we have to get at least 267, 368 purchase sale agreement. Let's say we ran comps on the home for the for sale by owner and it's worth $300,000. Well, this makes sense to work together. I could probably list the house for 300,000. It'll probably sell around there. And then you're going to net well, well north of $50,000. So it's a win-win situation to work together. But let's say we ran the comps. And similar homes in the area are showing, hey, this home is probably only going to sell around $225,000. Well, I don't want to secure the listing with the for sale by owner at two twenty-five dollars because they might walk away with $15,000 net. Well, they're definitely not going to be happy then. And I don't want to overpromise, get somebody to sign up for this, 
and then not get them what they wanted. That's just not good business in general. But let's say a situation comes up and maybe the home can probably be listed and sold around 265. Well, if we know how to work these numbers, we might be able to make a win-win situation still. And the reason we can do that is we can adjust this. So yes, we might want a 5% commission, but at the end of the day, it's all about the sellers. It's what they want is about helping more people. And I would rather have a portion of a listing versus no listing. So I can adjust this in order for them to still make 50. So let's run the numbers real quick if we come into this situation. So 265, let's say that's what I estimate it, it could probably be listed for and we'll get a purchase sale agreement for that. Now we just go backwards. So we minus the 200 from the mortgage. So now we're at 65. And then we have 4,000 in closing costs. So we're at 61. Well, now there's $11,000 of difference in order to get them to net $50,000. So maybe I can't charge a 5% commission, but maybe I can lower that. So I could do a flat fee. I could say, hey, I'll list your house for a total of $10,000, a flat fee. I'll keep 5,000, I'll give 5,000 to a buyer's agent. Well, now they net 51 and everybody's happy. Or we can divide the total. We're really getting into math class now. So 11,000 is the difference. So I would divide that by the total, 265. And that's roughly a four, we go over here, that's roughly a 4.1% listing. So I could secure the listing, I could offer 2% to a buyer's agent, and maybe I keep 2.1 and everybody's happy. So if I do a 4.1%, I would have 265 times 0.959, or, oops, nine, This would equal 10,865K in costs. So I minus that from 61. And I get $50,135. So now it's a win win situation for everybody. So here is how you can get creative secure more listings, work with more people. And let me talk about that last point that I mentioned is securing more listings. Let me just erase this. So securing more listings. Here's what I did in my real estate career. So let's say I had that same seller that said, hey, I think I can sell my house for 500,000 and they wanted to net a certain amount. Well, what I would do is I would say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna run this at 6% commission or 6.5% commission. Maybe I wanna go a little bit higher. So let's say I wanna do 6.5%. So I would have, I would times this by nine, three, five. So 500,000 times 0.935, 467, 500, 200 mortgage, and 4K in closing costs. So that's $263,500. So let's say they wanted to list for this and they told me, Zach, we want to make around $250,000. Do you think it's possible? So then I show up on the listing appointment. I bring my seller estimated net sheet. I show them these numbers. I say, hey, you'll roughly make about this 
it is just an estimate. It can change. Does this look good to you? And they say, oh, wow, that's $13,500 more than I wanted. So I show them this before I even show them the listing agreement. And if they're really excited about this, I go ahead and have them sign off on the estimate net sheet. And then they sign the um, exclusive right to sell agreement with me because they're so happy. They don't really care what the commission is. So that's how I was able to get a little bit higher commission because I'm making the seller really happy. They wanted to make at least 250,000. It's a win-win situation and that can help you secure more listings. And then I also brought a couple closing documents from recent closings that I wanna share with you to kind of give you an estimate of different closing costs. So let me cover one. This is a Alta statement. So this is official closing documents. I'm not gonna give the address or anything, but this one sold for $365,000 and there was an HOA proration. So what that means is this home is in an HOA and they are gonna prorate the monthly fee or yearly fee, depending on how the HOA charges their homeowners. Let's say, let's say for prorations, what, what is a proration? So let's say for example, this HOA charges 1200 bucks annually. So that's about hundred bucks a month. And the estimated closing date is going to be the uh, July 1st. Well, they're probably gonna add about $600 to the closing cost because the seller has lived in the home for that first six months. So up until the point they sell it, that's what the title company prorates and they add that and take it away from the seller's uh, net proceeds. Another thing on here is county taxes, city taxes, same thing, they prorate it for how long the seller has been in the home for the year. If the seller hasn't paid last year's taxes, they're gonna pay those off and take those away from the net proceeds. What else do we have here? Uh, lender's title insurance was actually charged to the seller on this one. So on a $365,000 home, they charge $1,947.50. They charge a closing fee to the title company of $475. They charge the commissions and pay off the for first mortgage, $218,000, $814,000. So that was on this one to give you an idea of some things that they charge. Let's see, uh, title fee, doc prep fee, $150. Closing fee, $395 to the title company. $50 courier fee to the title company. $25 wire fee to the title company. $12 NOC reimbursement recording fee to the title company. Uh, $225 title exam fee to the title company. So all these things add up. Uh, this person didn't yet pay their 2021 property taxes, so they had to pay those off as well. Those came out of the seller's net proceeds. Let's see this other closing statement. We had title insurance again. So $2,485.10 off a $449,000 sale price. Commissions, uh, some, some other real estate companies charge a admin or transaction fee. So uh, if you charge that, make sure to add that. Some people, some people charge like, hey, I listed for 5% and my company charges a 199 admin fee or transaction fee. So make sure you add that in. Make sure your sellers are aware of all costs. Don't just sneak up costs on them. Make sure you disclose everything. It should be in writing. So that's something else. Uh, homeowners watching that. that, that's something that I would ask is, hey, do you guys charge any admin or transaction fees? Home warranty, so the seller actually is paying for a home warranty on this one. Uh, reimbursement for recording of power of attorney, $36.75. So there's different stuff that can pop up. Again, get with your title company, ask them for an estimate, go to, you can even go to your property assessor's website, see if they're current on their taxes, ask the owner, hey, is uh, what do you owe on the mortgage? Sometimes there's a second mortgage in play, so they have to pay off two separate loans of title, takes away from what they're going to walk away with. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Now you should know the basics of how to calculate what a seller can roughly net if they sell for a certain price point, and it should help you get more listings either for sale by owners or traditional homes and help you raise your commissions. 
If you are interested in this content, go ahead and subscribe below. If you're interested in joining Zach Taylor Real Estate, I'll provide that link below as well. And I'll see you guys next time.